Hello guys, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, so how was your holiday? Good. Yeah, okay. So last class, I think uh, we were discussing um, gases rate, right? And we had done about um, a real gas, the graph compressibility factor, the concept of the fact, the, you know, the pressure correction factors and volume correction factors we have done, right? Unit of A and B, all these things we have done, yes? <clears throat> Yeah. Could you tell me, just check your notes and tell me, have we done the concept of uh, barometer? How to find out pressure due to liquids? Have we done that? Just check your notes once quickly. No, fine. Okay, fine, let it be. So we are moving towards the end of this chapter. Okay, probably today we'll finish it. Okay, so we are going to start today's lecture with, uh, you know, a different uh, representation of compressibility factor, which we call it as virial equation of state. Virial equation of state. Okay. What is virial equation of state? Virial equation of state is actually, it is an expression of compressibility factor. Write down. Write down. It is the expression of Z, that is compressibility factor, in terms of, in power series of series of 1 by Vm. Vm is the molar volume in power series of 1 by Vm. It is represented by Z is equals to 1 plus, we'll have a constant over here, 1 plus B by Vm plus C by Vm square plus D by Vm cube and so on. This is the real equation of state. We are going to find out a very important, you know, uh, a result from this equation. First of all, we try to understand what is this, what is this B, C, and D we have, and then we'll have very important temperature relation, okay, which is very important. So B, C, D are constant. B is the 
constant or we also call it as coefficient like suppose b is the second bdl coefficient similarly c is the third bdl coefficient and d is the fourth and so on will go okay b c and d we have copy this down no we don't have the value of this we'll have a relation we'll see that okay is this an expression we have given first term is 1 so like you can say the first bdl coefficient is 1 right because the first term itself is 1 okay yeah so next you see now this is the expression we have from the real gas equation because the actual you know thing is the real gas ideal gas is the just an hypothetical concept correct ideal gas does not exist so we have the actual thing is nothing but the real gas equation that is a van der waals equation correct now from van der waals equation we'll try to derive such relation of compressibility factor and then we'll compare what is this b c and d we have correct so let's see first the real gas equation what is the real gas equation we have real gas equation is nothing but the van der waals equation which is p plus a by v square into v minus b is equals to rt and i am taking n is equals to 1 here for one more okay we need to find out z right z is nothing but it is pvm by rt so first of all we'll find out p from this what is p here it is rt by v minus b minus a by v square v is the molar volume here if you multiply this by pv by rt means we are multiplying with v by rt both side So v by R T, if you multiply, we'll get v by v minus b minus a by v R T. Any doubt in this? Any doubt in this, guys? No. Just we multiply by v by R T, so R T R T will get cancelled. And this v and v will get cancelled. We'll have v in the numerator, denominator here. So v by R T is what? V by R T is nothing but z compressibility factor. So this is z is equals to this. Further, we'll write one by one minus b by v minus a by v R T. Okay. okay now this you see this term that we have 1 by 1 minus b b by v so i'm considering this as x so look at this here we have 1 by 1 minus x x is nothing but b by v okay so this we can write it as 1 plus x square Sorry, one plus x plus x square plus x cube and so on. This is the expansion of it. Or if this is in GP, so sum of GP, you know, at infinite thing, then we have this. When we have infinite terms in GP, the sum of GP is nothing but one by one minus x. You can get it from this. 
or you can also consider the expansion of this one by one minus x is nothing but one plus x plus x square plus x square and so on. So this formula we are going to use here for this expression. Okay, so the expression of g we'll have here is z is equals to one plus b by b plus b squared by b squared plus b cube by b cube and so on bracket close and one more term we have that is a by v r t which is we have correct okay now you see if i take this one by v common here from these two term one by v here and one by v here so the expression becomes one plus one by v i'll take common b minus a by r t plus b squared by v squared b cube v cube and so on it goes just we are simplifying it okay now you see we are taking the concept like we are taking the condition of low pressure because we know ideal gas uh, you know sorry real gas behaves in ideal gas at low pressure and high temperature so at low pressure what happens you see at low pressure v will be high and if v is high then 1 by v is low correct because pressure and volume are inversely proportional and 1 by v is low so 1 by v square is even lower and 1 by v q is even lower than all those right so all these terms we can neglect at high pressure 1 by v square 1 by v q all these terms we can neglect at high pressure sorry at low pressure at low pressure the expression of z is equals to 1 plus 1 by v b minus a by r t and this term we have neglected so this is the situation we have now for the gas to behave as an ideal gas right so for an ideal gas we know for an ideal gas what is the condition z value should be what z value should be 1 correct and in this expression you see for z to be 1 this term should be 0 yes or no this term should be 0 then only z will be 1 correct so for this term to be 0 what when what we can say for this to be valid z is equals to 1 we can say we must have b minus a by rt is equals to 0 can we say that yes or no clr you can type guys correct so what is t from this t is equals to it is rb by a a by rb i'm sorry it is a by rb t is equals to a by rb no 1 by v we won't take zero because uh, first of all 1 by v if you take zero one cannot be zero right so numerator you let it be this one v cannot be zero because v is the volume of the gas correct so it cannot be zero it will be minimal negligible you can say but zero we cannot say and if you make this v as zero then 1 by v becomes infinity so this condition we are ignoring hence we are taking this equals to zero right okay so for this zero t is equals to this we get and this is the formula of t means at this temperature this gases this temperature and low pressure it behaves as an ideal gas and the temperature at which any real gas starts behaving as an ideal gas is called boils temperature boils temperature have have asked many times this question 
boils temperature it is a by rb right it is a temperature right now it is a temperature at which real gas behaves as an ideal gas at low pressure correct done temperature at which real gas behaves as an ideal gas at low temperature okay we also this is boils temperature we also call it as tb that also you can write boils temperature tb a by rb now you see this boils temperature tb is equals to a by rb correct and we know a and b will have different values for different different gases means it is not constant r is obviously a constant but a b value will be different for different different gases right it means the boils temperature will be unique for a given gas means it is it will be a different value for co2 and will have a different value for n2 will have a different value for o2 but the pressure must be low right so boils temperature will be different from different different gases since ab values are different for different gases understood any doubt in this depends on a and b hence will be different for different for different gases no doubt done okay so this is one thing boils temperature okay sometimes they also ask you the you know the order of boils temperature for a given gases so a and b if you can compare you can compare the ratio of a by b and hence you can compare the boils temperature okay now the next we need to understand here is write down is the liquefaction of gas what do you understand by liquefaction yes conversion to liquid yeah so liquefaction of gas is nothing but the conversion of gas into liquid okay so we need to focus on this how do we convert gas into liquid okay now you tell me one thing if you talk about the intermolecular force which one has more intermolecular force gas or liquid which one has more intermolecular force gas or liquid liquid right so we can say imf here we have very weak very weak imf and here we'll have weak imf right 
So obviously liquid has more intermolecular force than gas. So it means what to convert this gas into liquid, we have to increase the intermolecular force. Yes. Right. I have already told you that we have a range of intermolecular force for different different states. Correct. First, we have suppose gas intermolecular force is this and then we have liquid intermolecular force and then we have solid intermolecular force. Okay. You keep on, <coughs> excuse me, you keep on increasing the intermolecular force. You'll get a point and beyond this point, the gas starts converting into liquid. Further, you keep on increasing the intermolecular force beyond a certain point, liquid starts converting into solid. So point is, when we have to convert gas into liquid, we have to increase the intermolecular force, right? Now this we can achieve by, by increasing the intermolecular force. I hope all of you will agree with me on this, right? We have to increase the intermolecular force. So what we need to do to increase the intermolecular force first is if the gaseous particles are close enough, suppose this is the situation, gaseous particles are like this and another situation is this. Then obviously here we'll have less interaction than this. Yes or no? Means if the gaseous particles are close enough, they will have interaction. If they are far away, the interaction will be less. So our objective is to decrease the distance, average distance between the gaseous particle. Correct. And this we can achieve by increasing pressure. Because if you increase the pressure, compression happens and the gaseous molecules comes closer. Correct. Understood this? Pressure we are increasing, volume will decrease, gas contracts, and when gas contracts, the average distance between the gases particle will decrease, and hence the interaction increases. So first thing in order to achieve this, what is the first thing we can do? The first way by we can achieve this particular thing, conversion of gas into liquid, is by increasing by increasing pressure. Right. In this, just one line you write down. As pressure as pressure increases, as pressure increases, volume decreases. Volume decreases. Contraction takes place. Contraction takes place. Pressure increases. Volume decreases. Contraction takes place. The average distance between the gaseous particles decreases. The average distance between the gaseous particle decreases and hence interaction increases. And hence interaction increases. Okay, this is the first, uh, you know, condition here. The second condition is what we can also achieve the same by increasing interaction and we can increase interaction by increasing pressure plus by decreasing temperature. What happens with decrease in temperature? What happens once we decrease the temperature? No, it's not that. See, we know the kinetic energy of gaseous particle is equals to 3 by 2 kT. K is the Boltzmann constant. If you go back, check your notes, you'll get this. Yes, the kinetic energy decreases. That's right. Yeah, so Rujitya, we can also say that less randomness and hence interaction will be more. We can say that. That's fine. But actual thing is what we know the gaseous particles their kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature. You see this relation. Ke is directly proportional to T. So as you decrease the temperature, the kinetic energy also decreases, 
right? And when kinetic energy decreases, the gaseous molecules you see, the gaseous molecules process each other at a, with a less velocity, right? Because the kinetic energy is less. So when they crosses each other, which is lower velocity, lower velocity, right? So they will have the chance of interaction with each other. Otherwise, if the two object crosses each other with a very high velocity, like this, they will cross, right? So the interaction is less. Interaction is not possible in that case. Okay. So with decrease in kinetic energy, what happens? Decrease in temperature, what happens? Kinetic energy decreases, and hence the interaction increases. Or you can also say. Randomness, the random motion of the gases particles will become less and hence the interaction could be more, right? So in order to achieve this condition, gas to liquid, we can either increase in pressure or we can decrease in temperature. Logic, everything we have discussed. Understood all of you? Okay, liquefaction, now you look at this graph. So this axis is the pressure and this axis is the volume, okay? All of you draw this graph. Okay, so this is the graph we have for liquefaction of gas. And this is a different, different temperature, you see. This is a temperature T1, this is a temperature T2, at T3, and so on. Yes. Yes, curves are isotherm. Yes, isotherms are those graphs which we draw at constant temperature. Right. So constant temperature graphs are the iso are called isotherms. Correct. Now you see this. 
at any temperature what we do try to understand this okay yeah it's a smooth it, actually it is not a curve like this i have drawn this just to make you understand okay uh, what we get we got these these points actually this point this point this point all these points and when we connect these points we get a graph like this okay it's not like we have a graph first and then we draw like this first we have this only at a given temperature what we are doing here you see pressure we keep on increasing we are increasing the pressure continuously increasing the pressure continuously and you'll got a point here and at this point you'll get the first drop of liquid where the gas starts converting into liquid so this side we have gas here we have liquid plus gas and this side we have only liquid okay so you keep on increasing the pressure at this point the first drop of liquid form and then here we have gas plus liquid mixture and at this point this all the gas converts into liquid and we'll get a sharp curve here like this okay and the same thing we have at different temperature means at t1 we have this t2 again we have the same kind of you know graph we get t3 also we get the same kind of graph okay but the difference in these three temperature is what that the width of the graph is decreasing right the graph goes like this a bell shaped graph no it goes like this so width of the graph is decreasing correct so when the width of the graph decreases it means what the amount of gas that converts into liquid is also decreasing correct as we go from t1 to t2 to t3 the amount of conversion or the liquefaction is less it means what the relation of these three temperature is what t1 is less than t2 is less than t3 means at three different temperature we have done this so if t3 is maximum then only we can have this condition possible because we know at higher temperature the liquefaction becomes difficult and hence the the liquefaction is less over here least with t3 temperature t3 should be the max among the three understood no doubt yeah similarly as you keep on increasing the temperature as you keep on increasing the temperature you will get a point right you will get a point at that point you know or beyond that point you can say the liquefaction is not possible right because you are increasing temperature continuously so you, you will get a point uh, you know where the interaction among the gases molecules becomes zero because you have increased the temperature so much ideally we should decrease the temperature but here we are increasing the temperature right so you will get a point a value of temperature where the interaction becomes negligible or zero and then the liquefaction of gas is not possible and that point or beyond that point the gas starts behaving as an ideal gas because there is no interaction and we know the pv graph of ideal gas is like this only it goes if you remember this we have done these things yes or no yes pv graph is this only for ideal gas and the same nature of graph we get here you see at this point beyond this point we we'll get the same graph because beyond this point the interaction is zero gas behaves as an ideal gas and hence the liquefaction is not possible at all right so this point beyond which the liquefaction of gas is not possible this we call it as the critical point all of you write down this point here as per the graph we have drawn this point here is the critical point okay so how do we define a critical point write down the definition write down the definition see both way we can define this okay like above this point a bit like beyond this point the liquefaction is not possible or above this point the liquefaction is possible both way we can define one second guys
guys just two minute okay Yeah, so we are talking about critical point, right? So, what is critical point? How do we define it? Correct. Write down. It is the condition It is a condition below which below which the liquefaction of gas is possible. Condition below which the liquefaction of the liquefaction of gas is possible. Okay, we can also define this other way, like condition above which the liquefaction of gas is not possible. Both way we can define. So they ask questions like this also: which statement is right or wrong regarding critical point? Okay. So both way you must understand, both way we can define above which or below which, whatever it comes in the option, accordingly you can write your answer. Okay, this is one thing. Now at critical point, we can define temperature, pressure and volume also. Like temperature is what, write down, critical temperature. Critical temperature. The definition of critical temperature is, write down, it is a temperature, it is a temperature above which critical temperature, I'll write down here, critical temperature, it is represented by Tc, okay, write down, it is a temperature above which gas cannot be liquefied
gas cannot be liquefied no matter no matter how much pressure is applied no matter how much pressure is applied so beyond this point the liquefaction is not you know possible because you have already increased the temperature to such an extent that the gaseous particles are moving randomly with a very high velocity so interaction is not possible right hence the liquefaction is also not possible right so critical temperature definition is this this also in other way we can write the temperature below which the liquefaction of gas is possible by applying pressure this way also we can define temperature below which or maximum temperature you can also write down it is a maximum temperature below which the liquefaction of gas of gas is possible by applying applying pressure okay so must keep this in mind both way we can define which one sir the the last uh, definition i have written it should i go back okay fine yeah so this is the like you know the definition of this similarly we can also define critical critical pressure pc write down it is a minimum pressure required it is a minimum pressure required to liquefy a gas a gas at critical temperature at critical temperature next is critical volume write down it is a volume at it is a volume at critical temperature and pressure and critical pressure okay tc vc and this then <clears throat> all these parameters are actually defined for one mole okay we define it per mole actually for one mole all these parameters defined
Yeah, done. Okay. Now, so what is the condition of critical point? Condition of critical point. This one is also important. If you look at this, this graph here that you have drawn, this is the critical point we have. You see, this is the critical point. And at this point, you see this line I haven't drawn here. It's, it, it doesn't seem to be parallel to this. But this point, you see, this line is almost parallel to this x-axis. It's almost parallel like this. Then it goes, graph goes like this, OK? Almost parallel to x-axis here. So at this point, this graph is parallel to x-axis. So we can write down the slope of this line here. <clears throat> that is dp by dvm, where vm is a molar volume, because axis is p and v. If it is x and y, then the slope is what? dy by dx. You know this? Slope of any curve in this axis, x and y, it is dy by dx. Correct? So nothing but the slope. You have this idea, right? You have done this? No or yes? OK. So like dy by dx is the slope. So here, instead of x, we have v. Instead of y, we have p. OK. So slope of this curve at critical point, at critical point is d p by dvm. This slope, since it is parallel, so this is equals to 0. Right. This is the condition of critical point. So the condition of critical point here will be many a times they have asked this question. The first condition we can write dp by dvm equals to zero. And hence, we can also write the double derivative of it. d2p by dvm square is also equals to zero. So this is the condition of critical point. OK, now with the help of these conditions, we can actually find out the critical pressure, critical temperature and critical volume. OK, so we have to find out PC, VC and TC, right? When I write PC, VC and TC, obviously it is for critical uh, you know, point. We also find out the compressibility factor at critical point. So what is the compressibility factor at critical point? Z is equals to? It is PC VC by RTC. This PM by PVM by RT only. But since the pressure, temperature, and volume is this, so compressibility factor is this Okay, at critical point. This is at critical point. So our objective is to find out, first of all, PC, VC, and TC. Once we get this, substitute all these things here. You'll get compressibility factor at critical points. All these things are very important. Many a times they've asked this question in the exam. So these things are very important. OK, now you are going to see how do we find out this PC, VC, and TC, correct? Simple one, you see, for n is equals to 1, the real gas equals to what? P plus A by Vm square into Vm minus B is equals to RT. OK. What we need to find out, always keep this in mind, condition we have to apply. So what is the condition? Condition is dp by dvm. So if I find out the expression of pressure, 
in terms of dm and we differentiate it you will get the you know expression of db by dvm yes or no tell me pressure will find out in terms of dm and then we'll differentiate the pressure correct so our like the objective is very clear we need to find out this and in order to find out this we'll first write down the expression of pressure so pressure is equals to what we'll have rt by vm minus p minus a by vm square then we'll write down dp by dvm it is minus of rt by vm minus b square right plus 2 a by vm cube okay and since the condition is what dp by dvm is equals to 0 we'll equate this to 0 so we'll get here 2 a by vm cube is equals to rt by vm minus b square how many of you understood this yeah this is first equation we have first relation it's not done yet but here is the first relation is this we assume this to be as equation 1 okay no doubt we have this expression we can again differentiate this double differentiation right so you see this when we differentiate this that is d2p by dvm square this would be 2rt by vm minus b cube minus 6a divided by vm to the power 4 and this will again equate to 0 so we get here 6a by vm to the power 4 2rt by okay this is equation number 2 now could you solve from equation number 1 and 2 these two equation could you solve and find out the value of vm from this try this once it's very simple Thank you. 
Yeah, tell me. What is the value of Vm you got? Is it three times B? Oh, is it three times B, I think? Yeah, Archit, it should be three B. It should be three B. Check your calculation, Shraddha. Yeah. So when you solve from one and two. from one and two, you'll get Vm is equals to three times B. You see, it depends only on B and B depends upon the gas. So it is also unique for a given gas, right? It's not same for all the gas. This is nothing but the critical volume that is Vc is equals to three B since we have applied the condition of critical point. So Vc is equals to three B. Similarly, if this VC you substitute here, right, here you will get TC then, correct? And the formula of TC I'll write down. No need to derive it, just write down the formula. TC is equals to, you will get 8A divided by 27RB. This is TC. 8A by 27RB. This is TC. And with the help of these two, yeah, one second, Shraddha, I'll go back. You can also find out PC and PC is equals to A by 27B square. This one. Tell me the value of Z at critical point. What is the value of Z? Yeah, that's right, Manumati. So Z is equals to PC, VC by RTC. Yeah, <clears throat> correct, Anya. Correct, yeah. So when you substitute all the value here, the value of Z you will get 3 by 8. This question they have asked many times in all the exam, the value of Z 
at critical point. Correct? Must remember this. All this formula also, you must remember. Suppose if they ask you to compare <coughs> critical temperature for given gases, you need to compare A by B, ratio of A by B for those gases. Yeah, understood, any doubt? Done, all of you? Correct. Now, one more uh, term we have that we call it as reduced reduced equation of state. Write down. See, reduced equation of state, we define with respect to, we define with respect to reduced temperature, reduced pressure and reduced volume. Correct. So first of all, what is reduced temperature? TR. Write down, it is a temperature with respect to critical temperature. It is the temperature with respect to critical temperature. So TR is equals to T divided by Tc. This is reduced temperature. Similarly, reduced pressure that is uh, T, sorry, that is PR. This equals to <clears throat> PR is equals to T divided by Pc and reduce volume vr is equals to v divided by vc okay so from all these expression if i find out temperature t is equals to what tr into tc it's very simple TR into TC, P is PR into PC, and uh, V is VR into VC. Okay, now we have uh, this thing, copy down this first. We have real equation, a real, uh, you know, Van der Waals equation. In the Van der Waals equation, we substitute this pressure, volume, and temperature in terms of TC and TR. TC, PC, VC, we know already, we have just now got the formula, substitute the values, the formulas, and you'll get the equation in terms of reduced pressure, reduced volume and reduced temperature. That is it. Okay, not much important, but sometimes they ask this question, what is a reduced equation of state? Okay, so we'll just write down the final expression that you must remember. Method I told you how to you know, do this and do it easily. So the Van der Waal equation that we have, the Van der Waal equation is P is equals to, sorry, we'll write down this side. We have P plus A by Vm square into Vm minus B is equals to RT. See, we are taking one more for all these, okay? RT. Now P, Vm and T will substitute in terms of P, sorry, in terms of reduced and critical temperature volume pressure. And we'll solve this. So when you solve this, the expression that you get is PR plus three by VR square. VM is what? VM is three VR minus one is equals to eight times T. So this is called the reduced equation of state.
this is called reduced equation of state okay copy this down done yeah so this is it okay for real gas now we have to discuss two more things in this chapter one is the concept of barometer and before that we'll do different types of intermolecular forces okay because from the beginning in this uh, chapter we were talking about <clears throat> talking about